Hi, let's open 100 Chrome tabs on this M1 MacBook Air with 8 GB of memory. Now I've done a bunch of videos about this uh, machine before, but one question I get asked a lot is about Chrome tabs because people apparently open a lot of Chrome tabs and they're very concerned about how the 8 GB memory model will handle them. Um, now I don't actually use 100 tabs, but there is this website and if you go there, it lets you open a lot of tabs uh, automatically. And so I'm going to go to this uh, site right now. It's called tr trackthis.link. It is actually by Firefox, and it's a way of uh, you know creating a lot of tabs so that the browser can't tell who you are because it changes your preferences. But we are just going to use it to open tabs and see the performance. So let's just go there, click on this thing over here, track this, and then open 100 tabs. Let the madness begin. And immediately you can see the tabs are piling up. You can see it at the top. Frankly, there's not enough time for uh, for a lot of pages to open up before the next tab opens up. I have sped up. <clears throat> I have sped up this part of the video because it still takes time to open up these tabs. And uh, so, you know, you don't want to just sit there and, and watch that happening. Also, I will say this is really a stress test, right? I mean, it's not normal behavior to have 100 tabs open. And so just don't base your entire decision on whether 8GB MacBook Air is enough or not on this video alone. I have a separate video on that on how the ATB holds up to a more realistic sort of an environment. But this is just a fun stress test to see how things add up. And they are still opening and they just keep on coming. Uh, frankly, I'm surprised at this point that uh, nothing has crashed. Uh, you know, the machine keeps on operating and uh, we're done. So at this point, the machine is using 7.4 GB of memory and the swap file is a whooping 5 GB as well. Now this was expected after all, 100 tabs are open. And so that's a lot of a usage. Uh, but the question, of course, is at this point, is the machine even usable? Can we do anything useful with it or is everything just going to freeze up? So let's find out. So I'm just going to open Visual Studio Code here and let's see how it comes up. And yeah, it comes up just fine. I've got a couple of projects going here. I'm going to close uh, this one over here, which was just basic HTML. Leave the other one in. And this actually is a React project running on a Node server. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and run it. Uh, with npm start and that will start it on the local host and i think it's going to open up in chrome again so this will be the tab number 101 so npm start here goes and uh, let's wait starting the development server it's coming up it's taking a little bit longer than usual surely yes but uh, let's see if it comes up at all usually it's uh, it's almost uh, much faster but with all the memory load that we have right now it's taking a little bit longer but let's see yeah well, there you go this uh, waiting, by the way, is because it's uh, talking to the backend Firebase, nothing to do with the load on the system. It's uh, fetching the data, yep. And once the data is fetched up, yep, it is absolutely snappy. There is no problem with it whatsoever. And so I've got the node server running and I've got Visual Studio Code running and I've got my React application running in the browser and everything is fine. Okay, so now I've got uh, Safari open as well, and I'm able to browse quite nicely. This is the uh, website Ars Technica, and as you can see, scrolling is fine. No issues at all, honestly. It's, uh, it's very impressive so far, even though the swap file is large, but you know, the system is usable. And uh, I can click on a link, I can go to, uh, you know, one of the uh, other pages, and it's going to open up just fine. There you go. Uh, mind you, my <laughs> internet connection right now, the speed is uh, a function of that. And I'm really maxing it out. Let's do Excel as well. Um, sorry, this is just the browser again. Uh, let's do Excel as well. So now I just add, now mind you, all the other things are still open and now I'm opening Excel. And let's just open one of the uh, sample uh, sample uh, sheets that comes with it to track my expenses, I think. And uh, it's taking a little bit of time to open, definitely slower than it normally would be, no doubt about that. But once it opens up, um, I don't see any lag. I mean, obviously it's a very small spreadsheet, but remember, I mean, this is 100 tabs in the background, so this is really not a fair test. It's a stress test, and I think it's passing the stress test quite nicely. I'm able to type. There's no lag at all in my typing. Um, I can scroll around the sheet, select things. Let me enter a quick formula, very simple one. Um, yeah, the drop-down comes. I mean, it's just normal. I, I honestly, I could. it's very, very usable at this point. 
uh, although in opening up I think it's slow because it has to swap out some memory from the swap file but once the application is open it seems to work just fine and all of my 101 tabs in Chrome are still there the 101st being the, you know my own application and if I just click on a few of them randomly um, you know right so they're they're very much there some of them are loading and that's again because of my internet connection which is absolutely maxed out at this point of time but uh, they're all, you know, whichever tab I click on, it's, uh, it works just fine. I can scroll in it and I can move around. So there you have it. I have 101 tabs on Chrome. I've got Excel. I've got my Node server going. Um, I've got Safari going and I have got a huge swap file. I know people worry about the swap file, but again, this is not normal usage, right? So this is just a stress test. But in spite of everything, the machine remains responsive. It remains usable, which I think is quite impressive. So uh, thanks for watching.